You see text appear in the lower left-hand corner of a black screen. It says 2035 CE, Europa Sector. As the blackness fades into a vision of an immense yet incredibly flat plain of white beige with light tan striations etched across it, you begin to hear the crunch, crunch, crunch of footsteps on snowy rock. A cryo geyser erupts <laughs> violently. Your screen transitions to an excavation site. As the scene comes into focus, you see a few people in spacesuits around what seems to be a work site of some sort. As one of the workers pass by the camera, you see the name Red Sea Mining emblazoned on one of the breastplates of the seemingly armored looking spacesuit. The camera follows the person in the suit, and as it does, a large circle cut directly into the surface of the moon comes into view. Perched across and above the sec a missing section of the crust is a rigging system held aloft by high-tension cables. The work begin begins to become slightly frenzied, and a sense of anticipation can be felt within the thin oxygen atmosphere. Chatter begins to quiet as a large, angular, obsidian black object is lifted out of the once undisturbed ancient waters. The workers spring into action, moving around with a speed and efficiency of a team that's obviously done their fair share of artifact retrieval. Little did they know the sequence of events that they were about to start, though. The camera detaches from the action amongst the workers and begins to focus in on the object closer. At first, you begin to distinguish lines and shapes etched, nope, formed out of the material. A deepness of black so dark that it seemingly swallows whatever light that touches it. The camera zooms closer and you begin to hear the hum as you see blue uh, lines of bluish white energy pulse in one direction and then the next. The camera continues zooming in closer and closer to the point of being able to see the molecules that make up the edges and the atmosphere around the object. Then you notice the object has that same bluish white energy field around it and it's splitting off and consuming atoms one by one. For what? Who knows? Faster and faster, this process of atomic separation happens until the camera snaps back out suddenly and you hear yelling and screaming everywhere. The object is consuming the moon and those around it. A near endless vacuum is just removing the people, the crust, the water, and the very moon itself from existence. It took less than a minute for this object to obliterate what took untold eons to form. As the object hovers in space, a vibration begins deep within the core of the object, beneath that impenetrable surface. Then a burst of white, wide spectrum energy is released from the object. In that burst, contained the rocket fuel for launching humankind to the stars, or the bomb that would destroy them all. A real life Akashic record suddenly falls from the heavens into the collective hands of the planet. Knowledge from beyond. Generations of information and discovery from dozens of species, all with a single goal in mind. To pass on what they know so that maybe the next one gets it right. As the solution to Fermi's paradox is self-destruction. Within that repeated wide spectrum signal is contained the secrets to Earth's wildest dreams, yet it was only the beginning. Fusion power, quantum computing, nanotech, neural interlaces, atomic manufacturing, and so, so much more. This broadcast became known as the Influx event. Though it was only the beginning, as it was only an elementary school primer provided from beyond those collective alien graves. The signal was designed to get a technologically capable enough civilization up to speed. And then, they're left to prove themselves. That proof can be provided to themselves by decoding the further data within. That data, known as flux data, is the most valuable thing now. The camera pulls back and back and back until the object fades from view, blending into the infinite expanse of space. Mm -hmm. Once again, you see text in the lower left-hand corner of the screen. 2046, Terra Sector. The blackness of space fades, and an object is seen again. This time it's Terra Sector, or Earth. Our species' home planet, 
The spheroid begins to fill the whole of the screen. As it does, you can begin to see something as different than the Earth maybe you know. The surface has far less lights across it. There seem to be concentrations of blinding light, though, still. With the camera seemingly on a collision course with the planet, everything gets bigger and bigger and bigger and fills the screen. The camera swoops down through the atmosphere, revealing large stretches of destroyed landscapes. Higher oceans, insane winds, blinding rain, enormous typhoons, a crack of lightning across the sky. The camera settles in on a flyby of the North American continent, or what it used to be. You see what was once Washington, D.C., the hub of global power, laying now before you in ruin. Collapsed building after collapsed building. If you were to look very carefully, you'd see the scorches left on the pavement where people once were before the bomb went. Separatist rebels nuked China, Russia, and the U.S. simultaneously. No one reacted well, especially the nation states, though their death throes would be over soon enough. The camera keeps moving across the land, with humans evacuated from much of it. It seems that the planet has had time to begin to heal itself. Occasionally, you see what could possibly be a lone house or a hut flash by. With the crossing of the continent behind you, what used to be the Los Angeles Valley begins to come into focus. Just ruination lays before you. A landscape of shredded buildings. What left, what little is left, seems to have been harvested for scrap. The rapid motion of the camera, never ceasing, begins moving up the western coast, and in the distance, you can see the night sky begin to lighten. In the lower left hand corner, New San Francisco, capital city of the Terran Arcology Consortium. As the NSF comes into view, you see from above the hills, stretching out towards the skies, magnificent, gleaming, bluish towers constructed from nanoscale manufactured titanium silica comp composite materials. The blue lights traveling much further than the pinks and the reds and the yellows and oranges that are seen up close. Beneath you lay large stretches of protected mill zone land where Varangian forces live, train, and test new weapon systems. Moving ever closer to the NSF, a megacity to end all megacities. Lights of every color and brightness seem to penetrate the camera lens as it wraps around the western coast of the city, taking in all the parks, homes, and transit systems of some of the wealthiest of the wealthy, encapsulated by long stretches of shopping district. The camera whips around the peninsula and heading east now, you can begin to see the industrial area of the city surrounded by the docks. You can see various aerodrones, as well as seagoing drones coming and going from the various facilities on the northeastern side. Off to one side, you can see the glistening new convention center with its high-tech bubble construction. Off to the other side of the docks, you can see the Shard, a haven for crime, fights, and gang-related activity located at the now disused sports arena. Seemingly cutting a large wound into the impenetrable exterior of the NSF skyline, various roads, skyways, and transit systems lead into the pulsating heart of the NSF. The camera swoops low to follow the road, hearing the beeps and hums and yells of a lively cityscape as it finds its way past brightly lit advertising holo signs written in Mandarin and English past the towering 25,000 person apartment buildings, past the street kids and gangbangers vying for space on the streets, it pulls into focus on an unassuming building. A rather boring looking, regular looking building amongst the likes of giants. The building has no signage, no one coming or going. With a silent motion, the camera slides sideways to the front of the building, getting closer and closer to, uh, to a top floor window. As if there was no glass to speak of, the camera passes right through the window. Once inside, you can hear the sound of technology and of one person speaking gruffly to someone. I don't give a fuck what he... As the man says what would become his final words, a minor whirring sound is heard and then... Whoom! The camera immediately shifts back outside and above the building. With one large crack, the building begins to crumble. Clouds of vaporized debris rise from that rubble. After what seems like an eternity, but was mere moments, you see a few hesitant people begin to scramble over and into the debris. The camera fades. What happens over the following days 
few are privy to, and certainly not someone such as a lowly runner, but the calls won out. Deals have been made. So, let's start our campaign. Dalton is driving uh, for various uh, dead drops he sort of receives. He gets like a notification. He's got to go to a place. Once he gets there, the person he picks up will tell him where to go next. So he's essentially just in this drive chain of going, picking up, going to another place, picking up. And 11 a.m. is kind of right in the middle of his day. He's going to take lunch soon. Looking forward to lunch. That's always his favorite part of the day where he's made something for himself the night before and basically the only real excitement Dalton gets in his life is what he's decided to make himself the night before and the lunch he has the day after okay. uh, very boring guy uh, for the for the most part like essentially your New York cab driver just a pudgy 45 year old man big thick mustache uh, he wears a variety of hats um, so he wears flat caps and he's usually got like a button, like a, an undone button up shirt over like some other like very clearly cheap local store shirt. And uh, All right. uh, he, uh, he, 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 he wears like khaki pants and stuff. He doesn't wear jeans. He tries to, he, he's a little more professional than that, but it all comes together looking like a mess. Camera comes in behind somebody and you just sort of see people parting a little bit. As this person walks down the sidewalk. Cat, what's Jacob up to? Well, t Tuesday is re-up day for whatever he needs, whether it be bullets, drugs, or just general, just checking him with context that he's keeping up with. Right now, just getting a little jogging, a little sweat, because fuck taking the bus. Don't need to waste 15 bucks when he got the cyber legs that he does. So right now, he's just scrolling phone, trying to figure out, like, who's going to be the re-up today? And right now, doing okay on bullets, so it's probably going to be narcotics. Well, Karen, Karen Thorne, if you will, has just walked herself into one of the best blouse stores in town, but unfortunately has had to deal with some of the worst customer service that she's had to deal with in the last 15 years. And she's letting the person behind the counter know that there is nothing that she can do to fix this situation anymore. She's broken the trust that is set up between the customer and the person who's serving them. Um, there, you see a humanoid who is barely recognizable as a born human. Parts of their body have been replaced haphazardly with some seem to be parts from drones others seem to be like once top of the line military tech but now long overdue do you see what you can only describe as a modern day frankenstein as she hobbles across the room she's you see her actually bouncing to a bit of music now you would only hear a muffled hum coming from inside her head but she's simply bobbing to her own thing as she's deep inside a drone. Its parts are completely splayed open as she is fitting new parts as you speak, like as we all see. No, this, this, this has got, this will get, get in there when I, there we go. Plug in. Start on this, um, this really loud, vibrant commercial, seeing the same iridescent, pearlescent man. Um, and you hear this, you know, this playful, sultry female voice saying things like, he's whatever you want to be. He's the man you need in your life. And you see images of, like, a large, hunky, pearlescent man flexing his muscles and stuff. And then you see an image of, like, this, you know, bashful little tweet kind of looking away from the camera. And you see another, like, you know, text and some stuff, and the voice says, 
customizable. And you actually, the commercial actually does show a rather detailed image of his penis that grows in length a bit with a slide whistle sound. <laughs> and then the commercial, and then after another series of images of other configurations and things, um, the commercial just shows the default form, which is his rather tall, slightly muscular form, and says, Troy, Model 3 series now available. And then we zoom back out and of a screen over a, a, an alleyway. And we see Troy, the same model of robot that was in the commercial, huddled down, crouching over some a pile of some kind of technology of some junk of spare parts and stuff and going through it. And you see a rather large hole in the back of his head. With bits of circuitry, some actuators, various gears or whatever, just robotic stuff. Pieces. Pieces. At the back of his head. And he is just emotionlessly going through various pieces that look like they might fit there. They don't. And so he continues just going through piece by piece, finding something that he could use to repair himself with. Uh, we find uh, we find Patty in the back seat of an arms robbery, not gone well, um, as we attempt to get away. How's Patty doing? Angus, when was the last time I told you, don't pull the trigger unless you plan on getting shot? And my hands are like, I'm wrist deep in his guts at the moment as like I'm trying to like put it all back together because there's like three different bullets in there and I'm like digging it out as he's like yelling like shut the fuck up um as you're yelling shut the fuck up your comm device starts ringing I got five minutes I'm running from the cops right now I've got my hands inside of someone's guts cut the bullshit uh well let me wash my hands and I'll be there in 15 and I managed to put him back together and like give him a sedative to like get him to like stop crying for five minutes i'm like look bud you're gonna be all right drink a bottle sleep it off you'll be walking the next day okay all right how far away all right cool um he still has the communication device in his hand okay he has not put it away or gotten rid of it or anything okay um partially because he doesn't actually have a pocket to put it in he is wearing a speedo ah okay <laughs> He's like, he's literally just, wearing just almost nothing. Well, what type of candy are we talking about, little man? Um, a hundred percent. These are chiclets. chiclets. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck chiclets are. <laughs> you don't know what chiclets are? Have Not you ever my... heard of the drug chiclets? No, I haven't. Fuck. Then assume from there. <laughs> well, Caboose. Shit. Your, your Wikipedia search is going to say chiclets. I, I, you know what? Realizing that I'm just not in the mental place to just fucking be spending this money, I just go, you know what? I think I'm good, little kid. Don't worry about it. And then just, just, oh, again, little shifty eyes around before just like, hey, look, I'll just transfer you some creds. Don't worry about it, dog. Literally, she's like grabbing the glass canister that supports her brain. It's like, <laughs> Okay, good. Nothing's cracked. Nothing's cracked. Can you here, start here. shaking? I'll, 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 I'll check behind you. There's there's a liquid in it that you see a brain literally floating in, and you see the liquid, like, sloshing stuff. Okay, I hold it, and I help to, like, balance it to where it eventually slows. Okay. Seriously considering with the hour he has, we go grab an ice cream. You can see from your position that... Dalton seems to be sidling his way towards Jacob. You don't okay. you don't really know he's after an ice cream cone. You just see right. he's headed towards the two-story buildings, um, sort of like in an intercept path. Uh, he's he's headed that way, and Jacob's sort of coming around and like has started to yeah. curve into an intercept pass, like oh Jesus. All right, I'm like, everything all right, Dalton? Uh yeah, I'm. I mean, we we've got like an hour. I can take three minutes to go get an ice cream cone, right? Like you guys got this. I'm really just the car guy. 
Can you just wait by the car, please? I'll give you a second set of Viagra if you stay by the <laughs> car for the whole hour. Yeah, okay. I, I, I can be professional. I just I I really thought this was easy, but if, if you feel like if you feel like there's really some police force or presence here. I mean, yeah, fine, I'll man. I'll wait by the car. It's fine. All right, all right. All right. I'll 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 ease off the ice cream. And I, I say that to Patty as well. I'll buy you just a second one after this. Hey, I'm walking away with two more Viagras and ice cream cone. It's a good day for, for old Dalton. As Troy walks past the car, I think um, Dalton and Jacob are like smoking a joint together and Dalton just <laughs> looks at Jacob. Hey, did did that thing just pull a crab off its head? Troy, are you capable of... And she's thinking about the consideration. Um... Interact uh, inline hacking. If I have access to the device, yes. Are you able to net run? Yeah. You were you were facing a plus four. You got a Hello? Plus, you got a plus five. Ooh. Damn. Hey. So, as you reach out, as you go to connect to the various devices in the general area and the expanded area around you, all sorts of things begin to ping in a three-dimensional map in your brain. You can, you can communicate and see all of the net-connected devices. You can see the streetlights and the watering drones and the, you know what, give me a roll too while I'm doing this, uh, the watering drones and all of the infrastructure for the building and all of the communications, all of the subnets, and you can you can hear the satellite above you in geospatial orbit. You realize in this moment that when you're connected to the net this way, you feel godly. And you as a robot don't even know what godly feels like. You feel all encompassing, ever expansive, everywhere and nowhere at once. He's in his element. You reach out as if with your own hand, you reach towards the drones in the air. And instantly, they, you connect and they respond. What do you say to the drones? Please define your current directive. Demonstration run, convention center, New San Francisco. Elaborate demonstration run. Demonstration for the purposes of sales. Is this an aggressive act? Contrary. Are your weapons loaded and ready? Loaded, not readied. Do you intend to attack the building? No. Inquiry ended. Disconnecting. With that, the drones come in fast and hot. They plunge down at a rate of acceleration that far exceeds terminal velocity, zooming right in to that crowd in the front. And you, Krill, you, Troy, can see through that drone. You can see in high definition, crystal clear, three-dimensional image and audio as those drones come straight barreling in and stop inches in front of the crowd. Even the, Krill's like... <laughs> and you look to the passenger seat and there is a short, curly-haired, scraggly, sort of, I mean, vaguely gnomish looking man and he looks right at you with the biggest smile and says, hey there, my name's Dear Donald, but everybody calls me Bruno. What you doing? Oh, no. Dalton looks back forward. I love him. Has a, has a sudden realization that he should have asked for some kind of antipsychotic instead of Viagra. 
looks back. Hi, I'm Dalton. Hi, Dalton. Oh, My name's Giordano. You? Everybody calls me Bruno. Bruno. Okay. No. Bruno, do you know what a No, is? Dalton. My name's Giordano, but everybody calls me Bruno. Dear Dalton. Oh no, is this what I think it is? Voice. I'm not gonna say anything. I'm so confused. When you look up, True. when you when you're when Dalton looks down trying to figure this out, and you look back up, there's no one sitting in your passenger seat. Proce Dal Dalton processes it for a few minutes, then uh, on the communicator. Hey, hey Pat, Patty. Yeah. Uh, at some point, we're, we're gonna need to talk about what a stroke looks and feels like. And he clocks you. He wa starts walking right for you. <laughs> uh. uh I uh, kind of been sort of looking at my phone, but not really trying to kind of keep an eye on it and see this bit now heading right for me. So I put down my phone back into my purse and start calmly going, Pookie, Pookie, oh, oh, hi, hi. What's your name? I, I, I'm looking for my dog. Have you seen my dog around? Um, ma'am, my name is Detective Lieutenant Franks. Oh, a detective. Oh, wow. It's so nice to meet a detective. What is a detective doing out here? Are you going to investigate me? I pretty much know, know when to, you know, salute and pull my shorts down. Oh, oh, okay. Good. Uh, you, you don't feel like you'd need any little extracurriculars on the side to ensure that you have more structure and maybe a little bit of whipping, maybe, into uh, shape? Uh, Ma'am, I, I, look, I'm, I'm not new to this city. I, I grew up in NSF. I'm, you know, I've been around the block a couple of times. I'm pretty sure, pretty sure, pretty sure I know what you're getting at. And I got to tell you, um, I'm still not, I don't know why I'm telling some random woman on the street. I, I, I'm, I'm still not over the last, uh, she was, oh, she was so great. She was a fiery little redhead and she broke my heart. She just, she, she just left me, she's left me waiting at a cafe and I never got to see her again. It, 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 it broke me. That's terrible to hear. I'm so sorry. I, I, and he sort of shakes himself out of it. Like, what the fuck am I doing? He's like, um, yeah, dog, dog, dog. Um, yes, yes, ma'am. I will get right on that, that dog for you. Thank you. Yeah. She's kind of brownish, orangish, medium size. I think she's been running around. She needed to go potty really badly. I, I, I will, I will for sure. Keep a lookout, ma'am. I will keep an eye for that. Um, I, yep. I, 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 and he's, he's slowly backing up at this point. He's, he's, as he just trails off and I will, yep. Uh, protect and serve. Ma I will, uh, hundred percent. I, I keep an eye out for that. And, uh, but yep, 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 uh, yep, yep. And he's just, Thank he's you. fading back that way from whence he came. What did you do to that guy? <laughs> hmm? I didn't do a thing. What? All right, I'm going to attempt a connection with that. When you connect to the drone, uh, what comes up is a sort of um, textual interface, an ASCII interface of sorts. And then there's a, um, there's, um, there's literally like uh, two letters made out of um, text. And it says P and J. And the, P's are, the P is made out of P's. The J is made out of J. And underneath that, it says, for the greater collective. Ooh, okay. 
like, she keeps a swarm with her. She understands how collectivism can get. She's like, no. Uh, she sets his drone to self-destruct. I want to roll from all of you. All right. I'm going to narrate something. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Oh, fuck. <laughs> What did you do? Karina, what have you done? I, I don't fucking know. I saw communism bond and shut it down. <laughs> no. You ordered it to self-destruct. True. Mm. For the for the purposes of uh, for the purposes of narrative, I'll I'll do the narration. And then for the purposes of so you guys can understand what's going on, I'll explain what's going on afterwards. As you set this drone to, uh, that is out back of the uh, storage in the office area um, that is working on this park to self-destruct, what happens is in an instant, the park no longer exists. The back of the buildings are gone. And anybody who was in within, within this blast radius, feel free to take three physical damage. I'm sorry, five physical damage. If you're in vehicles, if you're in cover, or you're protected by walls, feel free to take none. But if you are out back of the building, the in any capacity or adjacent to the parking area of the park out back, and are not in cover, then you will be taking five damage. So I'm good. I just pre-detonated a terrorist, like, targeted explosive. God damn it. You know what? In the grand scheme of things, probably some good being done there. The crater, still smoldering and the camera fading to black, that's the end of our session.